And so there are four P's that we always look into when we're talking about study abroad and um, specifically faculty-led programs in general. Um, the first is, um, the, of course, the teaching itself, the pedagogy. And so we're looking at how can we design the students' learning experience through this coursework and um, how they are learning? Um, how can we effectively lead them when they are abroad to learn this information? And then what are our institutional requirements that are going to impact this program and the execution of the program overall? The other thing that we ask is, you know, what is the type of program itself? So the performance of the program. Um, are we looking at a lot of guided tours or allowing the students to um, go, uh, go freely um, throughout that museum or that um, location to kind of tour on their own? Um, what kind of technological support would be needed for this program? Are you doing a hybrid course where you're teaching the course in the spring as well as a summer portion of it abroad? Um, what kind of technological support would you need also on site? What kind of support do you need classroom space or would the world be your classroom? What other kind of services like translation and interpretation services? And then how can we um, easily stage these different types of discoveries that the students will make throughout that e experience? And then the pertinence. Um, what kind of learning environment and um, location is the student in that is going to really correlate with those learning goals? Um, how are they going to really, how are you going to utilize that specific location um, for your place-based learning? Um, how can we reveal the relevance of it so that the students understand why you chose that location and why these visits were um, selected for those students? And then the pace. The pace of a program is absolutely critical. Um, we don't want to rush through everything and not allow students the time and the opportunity to really process what they're learning. Um, we don't want to overwhelm them at the very beginning so that they're completely burned out by the time the program is over. Um, so those questions of how much time do you really have for your program? How much can you do within one day? And then also factoring in the various different learning speeds of each of your students, as well as how that in is impacted by their jet lag. And so to think about some program models and different opportunities for students, um, we are really flexible in terms of the types of programs, the length, duration, um, location, and all of that. So it really is your preference. Um, are you looking for winter break, spring break, summer, or semester? Um, it's rare to see a faculty-led program go for an entire semester, but we um, are open to that. We do have um, a, a program that is going to Ireland for our first year students. Um, that's a whole semester led by one of our faculty members in conjunction with a provider. Um, so those are options and, um, and possibilities for students. It'd be more courses that you would teach, um, but it is still a possibility if you were interested. Um, is it a standalone program where you go just for that small period of time and you teach that course, or is it embedded into a course that's already existing here on campus? Um, are you learning and teaching throughout the spring semester and then um, over spring break or over the summer you do a short um, abroad component? Is the course for credit or no credit? That's completely optional. Um, it, there are some faculty that have been interested in doing JSON courses abroad. Um, we've offered those and those are absolutely perfectly fine. Um, we can work with um, exchange universities that we um, have for our semester-based programs. They have been open and willing in the past to um, offer the support services for our short-term faculty-led programs, as well as we have the provider options and then um, homegrown programs as well. Um, there are some programs that we've offered um, collaboration with other institutions. Um, for example, we have one that is a public health program that is working with Rollins. Um, so it's a joint program. So half the students are with us and the other half are from Rollins and two faculty members are leading those programs together. Um, you have the option of staying within one city and having a full immersive experience or venturing out and doing multiple cities, um, multiple countries um, during that same time frame. Um, again, the other question to think about is how long? The day, is it just a few days, a week, um, several months? Uh, that flexibility is completely up to you. 
Are you looking to have an internship built into the program if you're, um, or service learning or research? That is absolutely something we can add in there, um, as well as community engagement. And I know several people, when they were um, RSVPing for the um, Lunch and Learn today, you had mentioned interest in the ELR. Um, we do have um, ELL, ELR opportunities available. Um, we have a faculty member right now who is working on, um, who has created a program that is solely ELR credit. Um, there's no additional academic credit, it's just for ELR. Um, and this is a winter break program that's only for four days. So um, that is something that is possible if you were interested in that option as well. So things we want you to consider, um, I kind of mentioned them a little bit in that last slide, but things to consider when you're thinking about a faculty-led program. Are you interested in working with a provider? And I will give you my <laughs> answer to that is please do. Um, after everything that we are working on right now with COVID-19 um, and our faculty-led programs, working with a provider has been a breath of fresh air and much easier to navigate in this um, ever-changing landscape. Um, so working with a provider has been a wonderful experience for all of our faculty members that are doing this right now. Um, what is your ideal number of students? Are you looking to have five students, six students? Um, would you be willing to go all the way up to 20 or 30 students? How many would be your ideal number for um, leading your program? What is the ideal time frame? Do you want a week, two weeks, a whole month? Um, how long um, do the students need in that abroad component? How many faculty members or co-leaders do you want to do this on your own or would you be willing to um, have another faculty member that are that is a part and co-leading with you? Has the course been offered before is definitely something to consider. Um, if you are offering it for the first time and it's a special topics course, um, those are easy to be able to do. Um, but if it's a course that's been already um, offered before um, and you're adding this abroad component, there are considerations that you would need to take um, for the curriculum committee and approval. Um, do you have any personal contacts or connections abroad? That's always helpful. Even if you're working with a study abroad provider to create this opportunity, your personal contacts and connections can be utilized. Um, we can act, a, the provider can act as an in-between to help coordinate with your um, contacts and have everything arranged and built into the schedule um, with those personal contacts that you already have. Uh, what are the application requirements? Um, do students need to submit an essay? Um, do they need to have a specific GPA, a language requirement, or anything like that? Are they need to be in a specific grade level? Can they be a first year student? Um, or can it only be for juniors? Those are things to keep in mind. The more limited you have um, for those application requirements, um, the more hesitant some students might be to apply for a program. Um, I will say if you start asking a lot of essay questions, a lot of students will start filling out the application and we see that they stop right at that essay and a lot of times don't ever complete um, because they're not willing to complete an essay requirement. So something to think about. Um, is this program open to only Stetson students or would you be willing to take non-Stetson students onto this program? What about other faculty or staff? Would you be willing to allow faculty and staff from Stetson to participate in the program as well? And um, the biggest question is, are students actually interested in this program? Um, it's always nice that um, before you start proposing a program and go through all of the work, is to do a little poll with the students that you already have in your course now to see would you even be interested in, in taking this course and doing this program abroad. That would give you a really good idea of how many students you could potentially receive on this program. 